This video is for people who have been asked by their doctor to shelter at home or self-quarantine due to a COVID-19 infection or possible infection. It's also for family members or friends who need to care for a patient at home. I want to share 18 steps based on the World Health Organization guidance from a document called Home Care for Patients with Suspected Novel Coronavirus COVID-19 Infection Presenting with Mild Symptoms and Management of Their Contacts. Everything we talk about will be from this document or similar guidance from the CDC. Before we get to the 18 steps, home care should only be considered in the following cases. The illness is mild, the patient is symptomatic but no longer requires hospitalization, an informed decision has been made to refuse hospitalization, inpatient care is unavailable or unsafe, in other words, the capacity is limited or the resources are unable to meet the demand for health care services. And in any of these cases, the patient must not have underlying chronic conditions that place them at a greater risk for developing complications, conditions like lung or heart conditions, renal failure, or other immunocompromising conditions. There should be communication established between your doctor or healthcare provider for the duration of the home care until symptoms have resolved, and that includes an assessment of the patient's home environment to make sure it's suitable for home care. And for the purposes of the World Health Organization document, the term caregivers refers to parents, spouses, and other family members or friends without formal health care training. Let's go to step one. Place the patient in a well-ventilated single room. In other words, with windows open and a door open. I'll get to more on the ventilation in just a moment. Step two, limit the movement of the patient in the house and minimize shared space. Ensure that shared spaces, in other words, the kitchen, the bathroom, are well ventilated. Again, keep windows open. So if you have a kitchen exhaust fan or a bathroom vent fan, you may want to keep those running. Some more guidance that was given by the CDC says to make sure that shared spaces in the home have good airflow, such as an air conditioner or an opened window, weather permitting. Step three, household members should stay in a different room or, if that's not possible, Maintain a distance of at least three feet from the ill person. For instance, sleep in a separate bed. Step four, limit the number of caregivers. Ideally, assign one person who is in good health and has no underlying chronic or immunocompromising conditions. Visitors should not be allowed until the patient has completely recovered and has no signs and symptoms. Step five, perform hand hygiene after any type of contact with patients or their immediate environment. In other words, hand washing. Hand hygiene should also be performed before and after preparing food, before eating, after using the toilet, and whenever hands look dirty. If hands are not visibly dirty, an alcohol-based hand rub can be used. For visibly dirty hands, use soap and water. A little more guidance from the CDC. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Step 6. When washing hands with soap and water, it's preferable to use disposable paper towels to dry hands. If these are not available, use clean cloth towels and replace them when they become wet. Step 7. To contain respiratory secretions, a medical mask should be provided to the patient and worn as much as possible. Now, let's talk about this for a second because with the shortage of medical masks, this is going to be really difficult. So let me share some guidance from the CDC about homemade masks. This is what they say. In settings where face masks are not available, healthcare providers might use homemade masks, the examples they give a bandana, a scarf, for care of patients with COVID-19 as a last resort. However, homemade masks are not considered personal protective equipment since their capability to protect healthcare providers is unknown. Caution should be exercised when considering this option. Homemade masks should ideally be used in combination with a face shield that covers the entire front, in other words, it extends to the chin or below, and the sides of the face. So what I'm going to do is include a link or multiple links in the description box below this video to some guidance, some videos that will show you how to make a homemade face shield and a homemade face mask, because in the event that you can't get your hands on an actual medical mask or N95, it's at least better than nothing to have some type of covering over your face. I hope that helps at least a little bit on this step seven here. It goes on to say, individuals who cannot tolerate a medical mask should use rigorous respiratory hygiene, that is, 
The mouth and nose should be covered with disposable paper tissue when coughing or sneezing. Materials used to cover the mouth and nose should be discarded or cleaned appropriately after use. So if it's a handkerchief, wash the handkerchief using regular soap or detergent and water. Step eight is also about medical masks. Caregivers should wear a tightly fitted medical mask that covers their mouth and nose when in the same room as the patient. Masks should not be touched or handled during use. If the mask gets wet or dirty from secretions, it must be replaced immediately with a new, clean, dry mask. Remove the mask using the appropriate technique, that is, don't touch the front of it, but instead untie it. Discard the mask immediately after use and perform hand hygiene. Step nine, avoid direct contact with body fluids, particularly oral or respiratory secretions and stool. Use disposable gloves and a mask when providing oral or respiratory care and when handling stool, urine, or other waste. Perform hand hygiene before and after removing gloves and the mask. Step 10, do not reuse masks or gloves. Step 11, use dedicated linen and eating utensils for the patient. These items should be cleaned with soap and water after use and may be reused instead of being thrown away. Step 12 is to clean and disinfect daily surfaces that are frequently touched in the room where the patient is being cared for, such as bedside tables, bed frames, and other bedroom furniture. Regular household soap or detergent should be used first for cleaning, and then after rinsing, regular household disinfectant containing 0.5% sodium hypochlorite. So let's get some guidance on what a disinfectant can be. There is an 11 page document that I will link in the description below. It's specifically COVID-19 fighting products that are commercially available. If you're wondering what counts as a disinfectant. Step 13 is to clean and disinfect bathroom and toilet surfaces at least once daily. Same guidance here, regular household soap or detergent first, then after rinsing your disinfectant. Let me give some more guidance from the CDC on disinfecting. Their recommendations for home care situations are to clean and disinfect high touch surfaces daily in the household common areas. Your tables, hardback chairs, doorknobs, light switches, remotes, handles, desks, toilets, and sinks. Also it's important to follow the directions on your disinfectant. For instance, my Clorox wipes say that that liquid from the wipe needs to be on the surface for four minutes before it's actually disinfecting. Step 14, clean the patient's clothes, bed linen, and bath and hand towels using regular laundry soap and water or machine wash them on the hot water setting with common household detergent and then dry them thoroughly. Place contaminated linen into a laundry bag and do not shake soiled laundry and avoid contaminated materials coming into contact with your skin and clothes. Step 15, gloves and protective clothing for instance, a plastic apron should be used when cleaning surfaces or handling clothing or linen soiled with body fluids. Depending on the context, either utility or single-use gloves can be used. After use, the utility glove should be cleaned with soap and water and decontaminated with a disinfectant. And single-use gloves like your nitrile gloves or latex gloves should be discarded after each use. Perform hand washing before and after removing the gloves. Step 16, gloves, masks, and other waste generated during at-home patient care should be placed into a waste bin with a lid in the patient's room before being disposed of as infectious waste. Step 17, avoid other types of exposure to contaminated items from the patient's immediate environment. In other words, do not share toothbrushes, cigarettes, eating utensils, dishes, drinks, towels, washcloths, or bed linen. Step 18, when healthcare workers provide home care, they should perform a risk assessment to select the appropriate personal protective equipment and follow the recommendations for droplet and contact precautions. Those are the 18 steps that are provided. And please remember, if anyone who's at home has conditions that worsen, you need to contact their medical provider or doctor immediately. I'm going to include as much information as I can linked in the description below this video. I really hope this video has been helpful and will continue to bring you whatever information we can that could be helpful during this pandemic.